And joining me now is Republican Governor Bill Haslam of Tennessee. He's the person in charge of like, getting Republicans elected to state houses across the country. Governor Haslam, welcome to Meet the Press. Good morning. Thanks. Well, let me start with uh, this, uh, a similar question I started with Senator Van Hollen. What would you consider a good night for Republican governors? Is it limiting the number of losses? I mean, I, I know you're defending a lot of seats, sort of like the, the Senate Democrats. How would you define a good night for the GOP? Yeah, so on the, on the governor's map, it is sort of the reverse of what it is in the Senate. There's currently 36 governor's races, 26 of which uh, the Republicans, we hold the seats. So uh, it's, it's easy to say this is a little bit more of an uphill battle for us than it has been historically with that many seats. That being said, uh, we feel good about the position we're in, but we're not blind to the fact that a president's first midterm, when we have this many seats up, uh, to, like I said, 26 of 36, we knew we had our work cut out for us. That's why at RGA we've worked hard. We've, we've raised a record amount of money this cycle, and we're making certain we're, we're putting all that money to good use here in the last three weeks of the campaign. You know, it's interesting. If you look at the Great Lakes region in general, sort of that part of the Midwest, uh, it seems to me that that's going it, to, it's possible we'll, you'll have Democratic governors in, in pretty much all of the states that touch a Great Lake. Uh, if things don't go your way, and particularly I'm thinking Wisconsin in particular, but Michigan you're behind and all of these, what do you need to do in the Midwest to make it, see, uh, to make it feel like it's a better night than we think it, you're going to have? So eight years ago, we had a pretty uh, a great night in terms of taking over a lot of those uh, governors in, in Michigan and Wisconsin and in Illinois as well. Uh, Wisconsin, uh, Scott Walker, we all know what a great campaigner he is. He's one of the best retail politicians I've seen, and he's got good results to show in Wisconsin. So that's a, a very, very tight race, but I have a lot of faith in the end that uh, the people of Wisconsin will reelect Scott. Uh, Michigan's a little bit more of an uphill battle for us, but uh, Bill Schuette has been working hard. He's out trying to get his message, and his, he's pointed out in his attorney general races in the past, he has closed a lot stronger than people thought he would. So uh, while that's a difficult part of the country for us, we are by no means throwing in the towel and are actually somewhat optimistic. Let me ask you this. There's an interesting conundrum here. You've got a couple of Republican governors in very blue states that are going to cruise to re-election. I'm thinking Charlie Baker yeah. in Massachusetts, Larry Hogan in Maryland in particular. And at the same time, you're struggling in some of the reddest states in America, uh, your candidates in Oklahoma and Kansas. What are, the, what are yeah. Hogan and Baker doing right and what are Chris Kobach and, and, and Mr. Stitt doing wrong? I, th I think one thing to remember in, in all this is, you know, while the Senate races sometimes just turn into red jerseys versus blue jerseys, the governor's races are different. So you made a great, ex a great point in New England. We right now have Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, skipping down a little Maryland. We have a really good shot to win in Connecticut. Um, I think which uh, I, I tell people all the time that uh, surprisingly Bernie Sanders' governor is a Republican. Uh, right. But I think what you're, sh what you're seeing is um, people look at the practical aspects of electing a governor. Who's going to create jobs here? Who's going to pr uh, produce the best schools? And who's going to run our state's budget in a way that works? And so it's a lot different decision voting for your governor than it is for your senator and definitely than it is for your House member. I want to ask you about two spaces in particular because they both feature Republican secretaries of state who are Republican nominees. And there's some Democrats who don't think the vote's going to be counted fairly. I'm talking about Georgia and Brian Kemp, and I'm talking about Kansas and Chris Kobach. First of all, should those gentlemen have resigned their seats? Um, you know, you would say they would, should they have essentially recused themselves from the vote count? Well, I don't, I don't think so. Again, I don't know the specifics of exactly how the process works in their states, but I know how it works in our state and the Secretary of State's role in it. And while he oversees the process, there are a lot of people involved in that. Again, if, if our Secretary of State was running, I wouldn't ask him to step down because there are so many checks and balances in the process that I just don't have any fear about the integrity of the ballot. I can't, I don't know exactly in Kansas and Georgia how they work, but I personally don't have any concern about that. President Trump is a huge issue in the Florida governor's race. In some places, some candidates run away from him on your side. I could think Larry Hogan and Charlie Baker, for instance. Some have been running with him. Uh, is it safe to say that President Trump complicates things in some places and helps in other places? I mean, is he, if, he, if you lose Florida, is it on the president? Well, 
I don't think it's uh, any races entirely on the president win or lose. Um, I think, again, particularly in governor's race, it comes back down to, as, as, your, as the senator said just prior to this, even more so in governor's races, it's about the quality of the candidate. I think in Florida, the choice is this. Uh, in Florida, I think I'm, my numbers are right. I think they've added about two and a half million jobs in the last eight years under Rick Scott. The economy is booming. It's even more critical now. You know, the new tax plan, you can no longer deduct your state and local taxes. And so states like Florida, like Tennessee, Texas, that don't have income taxes have all of a sudden become very happy hunting grounds yeah. um, are, are for folks to go up and recruit, particularly out of some of the high states in the Northeast. We've seen that. Florida is on a boom. And if I was Florida, I would not want to turn that around. I, I compete with Florida all the time. I have a unique perspective as all the right. governor of Tennessee. We're, we're all obviously uh, competing with them all the time for uh, new jobs. To me, if they turned okay. around where they were going, the direction they've been in now, it would be a big mistake. Let me quickly ask you about your home state. You said this about the Tennessee Senate race in the New York Times about Phil Bredesen, the Democratic nominee and your predecessor as governor. He's making the argument, I'm another pragmatic in the tradition of Tennessee leaders. I'm going to do what's best for Tennessee. And then you said that's always been a good argument in Tennessee. Is it a good enough argument for him to pull the upset? I, I don't think so, and uh, that, it, that has been Governor Bredesen's argument, and he could point back to uh, a good term as governor. But uh, to a couple of things. Number one, Marsha has run, Blackburn has run a really good race um, mm -hmm. throughout this time. I think they're well positioned. Number two, Tennessee is one of those states where the Kavanaugh hearings did change things. People realized, well, it really doesn't matter kind of what you're saying. The, the color of the jersey you're wearing up there is really important. And I don't, I'm not, I don't know exactly, but I, I think the Kavanaugh hearings had a five or six point swing uh, in Tennessee. Okay. I personally think Marsha will win by at least that All much. Right. Republican Bill Haslam, the chair of the Republican Governors Association from Tennessee. Thanks for your uh, time and sharing your views. Appreciate it. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.